you want, what, what's that? A hundred grand for 10%. How about I give you 10 grand for a hundred percent? Then each task is to see how much money did you generate that first time round. Can it be repeated? They didn't keep the budget. They didn't raise enough finance. They didn't put enough investment in to actually even finish the project. In the room, 52 Jokers Wild. Once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away, there were two people sitting in a room, or two rooms as it may have been, trying to decide what to say. And then one person said to the other, it's a once in a lifetime chance. And what does that actually mean? Hang on, there's another one coming now. <laughs> That's where we started. That's where we went. And we started to realize, hang on a second. We've had a few people come to us and they pitched this idea that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. It'll never happen again until tomorrow. And that's what we started to discover. <laughs> so, and, you, and then we've discovered as we went once in a lifetime that um, Radiohead apparently did this song, which... Uh, no, 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 that's worse than Star Trek and Star Wars. It's not Radiohead, it's Talking Heads. Talking Heads, heads. there you Radiohead go. Radiohead yes. is a whole a other band, one. and if their branding is that bad, and you're saying ra no, Radiohead is a great band. Where do I get Radiohead Talking from? Heads? Talking Heads. I don't, you're a Radiohead, that's what it is. I only have one CD on in the car, and people don't even know what a CD is anymore, probably, but... I have a bunch of CDs, but because my car is an old car, there's only one CD in at a time. And what it is, is talking heads. It might be stopped making sense, or it might be once in a lifetime. One of my favourite albums and songs from talking heads, Mr. David Byrne and the big suit. That's why I said to George a minute ago, I'm wearing my big suit because I knew we might be talking about once in a lifetime and what once in a lifetime to me, immediately resonated was Talking Heads, Once in a Lifetime, and the song. And the lyrics of the song do have a little bit of that going on. It's, but it's about a lifetime, your lifetime, anyone's lifetime. No, I'm not even too sure if it's about that. But we'll say, we'll take our meaning from it. And we'll go, once in a lifetime. You know, we don't even know how we got here. It's every moment is a once in a lifetime moment. It will never re be repeated again. Every moment for every individual is a once in a lifetime now or moment and never be repeated again. Now in the context of once in a lifetime opportunities to use up this moment are a bunch of moments. We have people approaching us at a moment with their, with their pet projects, their once in a lifetime opportunity, their once in a lifetime opportunity, which they believe is our once in a lifetime opportunity that we can make them famous. We can help them bring their dream to fruition. Maybe bring a script to screen or a screenplay to screen. But it's if they're the writer and it's a pet project and it's a, a dream of theirs to get their book published and their film made that they wrote, it is a once in a lifetime opportunity initially for them. As an accountant in my previous life, what I hear when someone says, I have a once in a life op op lifetime opportunity for you, I'm immediately going, how much is it going to cost me? Of my lifetime, of my earnings, because normally what that is, is someone is trying to kind of pass their risk on to you. Now, not being a pessimist or anything like that, it's just, it's not free. Nothing is free. This once in a lifetime opportunity. Are you giving me half your firm for nothing? No, 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 not nothing. Are you give, I'm bringing you something that I'm not bringing to something, someone else. Well, does someone else or us or anyone else will first of all go, what once in a lifetime opportunity? To who? What's it going to cost me? What am I going to get out of it? Why am I going to use up my lifetime to make your once in a lifetime opportunity come through. So there's a little bit of language there. And obviously we all have these opportunities, like the song, back to the song, you know, I'm living in a big house, you know, driving a big car, married to a beautiful wife. How did I get here? That's what the song is saying. We don't know how we got there half the time. We, some of us are successful. Some of us might be living in a shotgun shack, another one. We don't know. but. Once in a lifetime opportunities come along every other minute, and you've got, or you can make an opportunity every other minute come along. But you've got all these once in a lifetime moments and nows to, to basically create multiple, well, fill in your lifetime and fill it with the things you want, your wants and dreams. So back to you, George. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, <laughs> in another part of the world, <laughs> you may you, you may find yourself, he says, behind the wheel of a large automobile. Yes, I got myself my large automobile driving along and doing things. It wasn't a once in a lifetime, though. <laughs> it was certainly not that. It was something totally different. But I know that um, you, you know you were talking about bills and 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 all the the costs of things. And I I know that. Um, 12 years ago we made a film called Fiddler's Walk and uh, I decided right I'm going to make this film it's it's uh, I know how to do all this I know how to get all the bits and pieces to put together but what my worry was my biggest fear was how am I going to do this because every time you sort of see an opportunity to do something as you said it was going to cost something and I, and I had to try and work out initially how was I going to pay for all those costs but what I began to realize for me on that particular occasion, it's not the case all the time, was that some of the people, all the people involved in the film became their own little mini investors. And I know you don't like some of the things that we did, but it was a way for us to get to see and test out whether or not we could make this happen. And what it was was that each person had a want. They wanted something. There were a number of actresses that wanted a showreel and they desperately needed something, but they hadn't got the money to hire somebody. And they, I went, well, okay, we have our little project. Why not help me make that project? If you give a little bit of your time, I will be able to put together a little showreel for you using that time. So it was a bit of barter, but it was actually the same thing. It was the same film that we were actually putting together. So it worked out really, really well. We were able then to, through talking to people that had locations, what kind of locations are we going to use? How do I, how do I create the illusion of this, this uh, inn that has an exterior, it has a downstairs, it has an upstairs, and it has a loft? And all of a sudden, these people came together and said, well, I've got this room here that looks like the upstairs, and we could use that. Somebody else had the exterior of a pub, but they also had a little house that they'd got done up as a pub and we were able to use that as an interior and we were able to link them by having actors just walk out of one door and into another door and we had a loft and it all came to it gradually all came together because everybody we knew what we'd built up a relationship with all these people we knew what they needed and what they wanted out of it what was their need at that one particular point in time that would help them move their careers forward and every single person in that in that team had a need, had a want. And because we built a relationship, we understood that. We were able to negotiate with one another how we were going to work and collaborate to make this thing happen. And it all came together. And it, it was amazing how it all, all worked. And they, they even people came back months later to do voiceovers, to to do what they call the ADR, the auto um ADR, auto dialogue replacement phase of the project so that we got a better quality sound. And it in itself was an experiment and we, we managed to achieve it. We knew how to make the project. What our problem was, we didn't know how to sell that project and then how to generate an income from it so we could potentially pay everybody back. And I think that's what most filmmakers have problems with. They, do, they know how to make their stuff they just don't know how to bring back the money for the investor who they initially need to put into their project to make it happen in the first place. And, and would you agree with that? <laughs> is, is that the no, one? I'm, no, I just the phone ringing here. I was just making sure it was nothing important. <laughs> but I'm listening to you ramble on there about God knows. The oh. one, no, no, I told you not to ramble on. About, I said, it's not ramble on. I, I've been terrible there. But it is reminiscent of what I'm hearing every single yes. day of the week. And looking out on every Facebook group out there, it's, please, can I have your time for nothing to make me famous? Please, and that's all very well what you said, if everybody's goals and targets and aims and aspirations are aligned and you have all those relationships and everybody is working together and giving up their most valuable thing on this planet and in their lifetime. They're giving up their lifetime. They're giving up their nows to align to a common dream to make to use this as a testimonial platform because their vision is aligned with yours. And they see this as a medium yep. to, to basically 
get their, get their art or, or, or talent seen. Now, that's all very well, and I appreciate that. But George, you know I'm an accountant. And I'm sorry, I'm going, everybody's working for nothing. Everybody is free. Professionals are going, I don't, that can't pay the bills. Well, no, I can't I think, bring that home think, to the wife. Yeah, no, no, the, no, sorry, before you go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 because no, no, I, I want to agree this, with you, because I think what's really actually happening there is, is that on that, I had to spend the time to work out what their needs were they did get paid in what they needed at that particular point in time. What most people don't do, in, 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 which is what I found in the industry more recently, is they, they, they say, right, you're going to do this. And then they expect you to do a whole load of stuff. And they haven't actually worked out what the cost of that is. I worked out the cost, everybody's cost on my project so that I knew exactly. And I made them stick to that with a little contract because I knew that they were uh, investing uh, again, time. Again, I said, yeah. I'm trying to align to the market. And I think that was the next sorry, stage. That was where we had to go. a billion of those things yeah. out there. I am in sick to death to the teat Absolutely. of looking at Facebook and the rest of it. And everybody wants everyone else to work for nothing. No, that means you're working to a shoestring budget. It's yep. never, no, again, there's two things you're talking about there. In the absence of the investor, it doesn't mean do nothing. It means the very thing you said, go off and find a team where you are have a relationship and your vision is aligned yep. and go do this. Yep. Now, we're in the commercial space, so we, I think we'll leave that one apart, that one for the moment. We have people coming to us with their scripts yep. and going, make me famous. This, and we're, we're not even able to ask them, how, what's the budget, what is this script? Is it 10 million? Is it 1 million? Is it 10 grand? Because all you're doing is coming to us with a once in a lifetime opportunity that could be between a million and 10 million and 100 million of unknown something of a volume of work for someone else to do, go off and finance, get, take on the risk, pay all the bills, especially for a right, in, in the absence of it, of it being commissioned. Yeah. That's the difficulty all these writers have. If they have a pet project or a dream that they want fulfilled, you go to Shark Tank, you go to Dragon's Den, and they will say, do you believe in this script? Do you believe in this story? Yes, I do. Sell your house. Borrow off every friend you have. You know, go do three jobs and get all that money and do it yourself. You're the financer, you're the investor. Don't expect someone else in the absence of, if mm -hmm. you don't believe in it, how the hell are you going to convince someone else? Now, if the story is great and you actually get... The problem with it, it's like, like a business. These stories are like business plans. Everyone has a business plan. Everyone wants to be on Dragon's Den. Everyone wants to be on Shark Tank. What Dragon's Den and Shark Tank in 90% of the cases is, is I have no money. I have a great idea. Can you pay for it? And basically, whatever I get left with, at the end of the day, you made me famous. You took away the risk. We use your brand, we use your money to kickstart it into overdrive. And, and if you come on board, I have a better chance of, of winning. And that's really what that is. Now, the dragons are going, you want, what, what's that? A hundred grand for 10%. How about I give you 10% for 100 10 grand for 100%? Because I'm taking away the risk. I'm making it happen. You have an idea. You have half a product. You've got something in a box. You've got, in the case of scripts, you've got it in a drawer. It's not out. Did you publish it? Is it a successful book? If it wasn't a successful book, what makes you think it's going to be a successful screenplay? The book you can nearly do yourself. The screenplay is 300 moving parts of someone else's wages, and we don't, you don't even know what it is and what it entails and the complexity and the CGI and the costume drama and multiple locations and somebody has to be paid to come up with the budget. None of this is actually investment or sales. This is, it's going to take 10 million quid to make it real to potentially have a customer. But your first customer is the investor and he's the only customer that matters because he's only going to put money in if he can see how he can get twice that amount out. And this industry has gone to pot. Basically, middle industry, micro indie production, indie production is dead man walking because effectively it's the highest risk on the block with no idea of how it's going to get its money back or paid. There might be multiple platforms out there, VOP, DB, doesn't matter. They're paying less 
for a shorter time, longer times, they have more power, the streamers are taking control, the, the investor has a hundred, hundred once in a lifetime opportunities to choose from, and he's going to, when he's picked two, the other 98 go, don't ever get to see the light of day because there's not enough resource, not enough money, and you, there might be a better something in there, but if you're a story or you're a business plan, that's going to try and get in front of an investor somehow, and that might be an executive producer, then you better be talking about why this is great, how you're going to make money, how big the audience is, why it's you and not someone else, and you, may, you better be doing double backflips and singing and dancing with bells on because there's a hundred once in a lifetime queuing up behind you. And that's the thing that, uh, that we were always talk, teaching the students, that... You've got to understand who your target audience is because until you understand who your target audience is, you don't know how big that audience is, so you don't know how much people are going to pay. And then you've got to work backwards. It's who's your audience, how are they going to pay, what distribution rights are you giving away so you only get 50%, and then even the producer only gets 50% or even less of that. And if you do write a book and you're working with Amazon the likes of, you only get 50% of whatever the costs are minus the production of, of the book. So you can only end up with an eight or nine pound book with about a pound if you're lucky. So again, even understanding those basic concepts, for some reason, filmmakers tend to think that they are different to every other industry. And yet at the same time, all the people, all the moving parts have to get paid for what they're doing. Now, as I said, that was a once in a lifetime, what we managed to do, because it was the only time that we could actually bring everybody that had a common cause, work out what their needs were, and we're able to sort something out. Every other project and every other little thing that I've worked on that needed some kind of budget, we ended up having the same problems. That people thought that what they were paying for was an item and they could do whatever they liked and that elastic band would stretch and do all kinds of things. And you kind of have to say, no, you've, you've acquired a certain amount of time that covers the cost of what you're paying. Once you go beyond that time, you then have to pay for more equipment, pay for more manpower, and you cannot afford it. And that's where you end up with the biggest arguments because they are so unrealistic ah, with what I their like expectations this. are. Do you, do you know what I mean? And that's the I same like with this every single because... film that we end up having to work on. You've got to understand how the components work. See, forget work. the films. For, uh, forget film because yeah. this is the. Con it doesn't matter if it's film, it's anything. It's anything at all. Basically, everybody is bar bartering lifetimes. Yep. They're bartering time. You know, my time for your time via me doing work on this instead of you give me money and I'll do something else with it and I'll buy some sausages and rashers. It doesn't, ultimately, and unless someone just left you money from when they earned in a previous lifetime, and we'll just have to, we'll forget about the, the abnormal parts of the curve. For the main part of the curve, people have to go to work to get money. And they, they'd like to go to work in a job that it does, it's not a pain to go to work and they're dreading because the only, it shouldn't be the only reason they're going to work is get the money to come home and, and eat, drink and like, you know, basically li like uh, not live, live is great, but exist. So we're assuming people have a good job or a job or a career and it's going to pay enough to live as opposed to exist and it's their, in their lifetime and their kids' lifetime and whatever, however they cross over and relatives and friends. So ultimately we're going, you're bartering elements of lifetime with people you know and don't know. You have relationships or a third party, some are closer first and second, family and friends and others. But at the end of the day you're going, in, let's say in the business here, we have people, we have people effectively cold calling via email, via IM going, We've once in a lifetime opportunities, and it's basically we're saying they're saying is, give us can you find some millions of money of someone else's lifetimes of taking risks and accumulating wealth, and can we spend it? Can we spend it on ourselves as wages? Can we spend it on making our screenplay come into existence? Can, can we can we spend it on going to exotic locations and shooting scenes and and being a cinematographer and being a location finder? And can you, can you change all this this someone else's money into my wages? And and then when I've I've spent that. I don't care what happens next. I don't care because 
that person lost their money and that, that film may never be seen and the audience member may never like it or they may never, uh, budgets, most of what we're finding is budgets ran out. An awful lot of who's coming to us is they didn't do the due diligence. They didn't do the proper planning. They didn't budget correctly. They didn't keep the budget. They didn't raise enough finance. They didn't put enough investment in to actually even finish the project. So a half arsed half finished film it, or 80% or 90% is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It's the biggest waste of money on the planet for the investor. He can't show it to anyone or anything. It can't be delivered anywhere. It can't be consumed by any customer. What it was, whether it be 90 million, 9 million, 90 grand is dead money, gone. Unless you finish that last 10%. But these individuals are coming along going, we want to find some money off of someone else now to de-risk the original people and ourselves to pay these A-list directors for something they didn't finish the first time around or overshot or, or, or use up the budget because, no, because, because of their art or because the budgeting wasn't done properly or enough finance wasn't raised. This is a whole journey of you need, if you're going to do a commercial something, it needs to be properly planned, properly budgeted, properly financed, properly resourced in terms of the right people in the right place at the right time, delivering their expertise at the right price and not exaggerated, and then properly finished off, packaged and delivered and distributed. So from end to end, it's not production in the middle, no sales and marketing budget, because then you have something in a box and no customer investor going, never again, not happening. This, all these relationships have to be aligned. Everyone has to understand their part in the machine and to basically, for, for to have a job next year, they want to make sure they deliver this year or next week because that's what's happening left, right and centre out there. If you're not an employee of someone else, you might be in COVID-19, you might be furloughed, you might have something to go back to, you might have a job. If you're a self-employed somebody to rely on someone else's money, you are in a very precarious position. So therefore, you make better make sure you're conscious of your first customer. And the only customer that matters is the investor. It's the money man. It's the person paying your wage or make or giving empowering you to deliver on your skill set. So that's something to be very, very mindful for, of what a once in a lifetime opportunity actually looks like, how much it might cost you, whose lifetimes are we talking about, who wins, who loses, and are risks aligned with the reward and time. And, and it's, it's interesting because as, as you were talking there, I was kind of thinking about that it's quite often we're, we're trying to promote writers to, to write material. And the other thing that came to my head was that... Um, if you don't know how to produce the thing in the first place, how can you write it? Because what you're writing, you have no idea what the budget is going to work through because you've not had the experience of producing that item. And that's the same again if you, if you, if you were producing nuts and bolts or batteries. Unless you knew how it, much it cost to produce it and work through the processes to make sure that it can be repeated because it's not a once in a lifetime. In fact, a once-in-a-lifetime event is something that will only happen once because you don't know how to repeat it. And that's where the problem with a lot of feature film ideas and stuff is that once they've done it once, they can't repeat the process because they don't fully understand how to get it out there and, how, and what to do with it. What we're trying to do, if you want to make it an industry, is you're trying to turn your thing into an engine. And if in an engine, you've got to fuel that engine, understand how that engine works to keep it going so it can actually get you to where you want to go on your journey and that you know where your destination is. And again, this is something where electric cars haven't been brought in just yet because the biggest problem was the battery wouldn't last very long. You could only go 30 miles on a charge and then you'd have to spend five to 10 hours charging the battery. Whereas if you went with a petrol car, you could get 400 miles out of that car and you could travel for the next five to six hours without having to fill the car up. So those were basic logistics. How do I get to my location? How am I going to achieve it with a car that doesn't go that far? And how many times do I have to charge it up? compared to just filling the tank up and those are the simple or sort of economics of the whole process and it's and again you also need to know how to navigate and what obstacles are going to get in your way to prevent you from happening these are storytelling techniques but they're also life journey techniques of how to get over obstacles that may hit you as you're going on the way and those are things i think we've learned over the years 
regardless of which backgrounds we're coming from, because what we're finding is that those diverse backgrounds that Garvin and I have are basically marrying together to say the same kind of things, because we're realizing that from those dual experiences in, in multiple areas, that we suddenly realize, actually, we now have got to a point where we know how to make a film. We also know how to train people in how to make those films so that they can do the job properly. And it will never, ever be a once in a lifetime opportunity for them because they'll know how to repeat it and repeat it and be successful and be successful in small chunks. That's what it needs to be. But you can keep building on it, building on it and building on it and keep repeating the process so you have a lifelong opportunity to see multiple stories being actually told, which I think is fabulous to be able to do. <laughs> I'm looking at some lyrics here now. Again, it just, I just scrolled quickly to one of the lyrics and it goes, same as it ever was, same as it ever was. Nothing is changing. Now, again, we, we, we keep on coming up with, um, you know, so don't do something and then expect a different result the next time you do it. You've got to pivot. You've got to react. You've got to, you've got to uh, align. So b people are out there and they're going, give me some money, give me some money, give me some money, make me famous, make me famous. And, and why would they expect a different result from the next person? When the first person, well, if you actually ask the first person for a bit of feedback, they might have actually said, well, the story isn't up to much or I've got five others that are better or as you said it's you don't know what the budget is you're there's nothing wrong with your story except it's going to take a hundred million to make and I'm in the five million space and that's the space I'm in and I'm the wrong customer for you so it's a line it's back to re, realistic and unrealistic expectations and aligning you know you know goals and, and aims and and getting the right team and and basically be talking to the right audience and the and customer you know in, in the sense of no point in selling to the wrong customer because you're going to be you, no matter how hard you try it's you're dealing with a brick wall that is not it's not it's not your customer never will be your customer doesn't want to be you just haven't realized that yet or you haven't actually more than likely even asked or you're totally unaware and that's where we were sending our stuff off continuously to one place maybe on youtube or somewhere else and there's no one there reacting to it because it's in the wrong box in the wrong room and there's no one in the room anyway to react and we're rejected and dejected but it turns out every piece of what you have is still brand new to the audience that hasn't met yet you haven't put it in front of the right person and yeah particularly more so you probably haven't put it in front of the right person in the right language so it can be understood as to what is it you want from us what is it you expect from us why do you think it's us at all uh, and and what is it you think you've got you know i mean it's great you've wrote a great script if it's a script you go oh it's a brilliant story you're your own best customer our, our, our book is fantastic to ourselves too but it's not up to you to make that decision it's up to the third party unknown to say that this is great i didn't know it existed i gave it a read it's brilliant i'd love to see it as a film and the person that might be saying that is not your mother it's actually someone that might be an investor or an influencer or make this happen or know someone that can so it's about getting your story of your story out there not the story because the story is a bill to someone else if you're not going to put your house on it and if you're not going to put your house on it it's a tougher bill as well because why if you're not going to invest with me you just want me to take all the risk well does that mean i get all the reward you get nothing that's so so the, you know you say you want to get paid for your story you weren't commissioned you weren't we didn't ask you know, we have a hundred others. You, you, how do you jump the queue? How do you skip the queue? How do you get read if all I have is eight hours a day and you're, you're number 97 in the queue? I will never get to you. And, no, and people like me will never get to see it, never get to hear it, never get the opportunity to make this once in a lifetime thing happen. So it's, it's back to, we all have once in a lifetimes. If it is a once in a lifetime opportunity, value it as such and give it the energy and 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 the chance it so deserves put package it to its best dress it up in its big suit bring it out and put it like in front and center if you physically have to knock on the door and stand there and force feed it if you can make sure you understand that it's got to the audience in question 
it was understood as what it is. You've explained what the opportunity is. They have understood and acknowledged that fact. And, the pro and what it is as an opportunity, forget. No one is interested in your story. Investors are only interested in money. Their story is how much am I going to make from that? How long is it going to take? How many people do I have to hire? How many people have to see it in the cinema or somewhere on this planet by whatever medium and channel that I get my money back by 10x? And if you don't have that explained to me in some form or other, you aren't even speaking the right language. I couldn't care less about your personal journey, your story, your J.K. Rowling, anything. It's what's the sale potential? What's the ROI? Who's paying the bills? Who's, who owns the risk? What's the reward? Your reward is we'll get that screenplay made and your next guy will pay you twice the price for it. But for the first time out the door, in the absence of someone asking, you're a walking bill. Make sure you know how much. And I think we're, we're a lot of what we're talking about is cycles. We're talking about engines. We're talking about um, motoring forwards. And one of the things that Garvin was talking about there, uh, I started to think about, was like the reflective process where you... You basically reflect on a problem that you've got and you work out a plan of action. You put it into action and you get results back to see what's happening. And then you make the next plan and, and based on the evidence you've got. And that pushes you forward. So if you go through that cycle, there's an energy. And as opposed to just being stuck in a single loop, which is the railway track we were talking about, about Hornby's and one of the other, if you get the thing going right, it'll actually start to go forward and drive you towards where you want to go. And you can do it in small increments. And I think that's the key thing to do, is to set the target of where you want to go and then work out the little increments that need to be made to actually get there so you can see whether or not you're being successful. Each increment will then minimize the risk that you're actually making to achieve the next one. And then you can start to ask for more and more. If it's a money cycle that you're trying to actually generate, then each task is to see how much money did you generate that first time round. Can it be repeated? What learnings have come out of that first time you did it? What do you need to change to make sure that you get back on track? And will it generate a little bit more money and build it up to the next block and keep on going and keep on going depending on what your outgoings and all the other bits and pieces are just managing that whole process and then you will be successful and i think that's how stories also can be made because they're also cycles they have art you talk about story arcs and the likes of they're cycles they work they go round and round and they drive things forward and they are a pump that's going up and down and i think if you can if you can look at that and see where you need to make your shifts and where you need to realign yourself so that you can start to increase your potential. That's the key thing. There are people that are doing that. And those people that work through that kind of process, and they may do it unconsciously or consciously, but they're starting to see that their effort brings about a reward. And that's where that keeps motivating them, using that word motor again, motivates them to actually do the next bit and the next thing and the next thing. And I think that's the key to, to a lot of what we've been trying to talk about today. So it's not once in a lifetime, it's no. generating an engine for yourself. No. Well, <laughs> I've, um, I'm reminded, and I, I don't know, actually I do know why, it's, it's elevator pitches. It's, you're going up and down, you've only got a minute. You've only got this journey of this elevator of someone's time. It's probably their awareness or their attention level. Whether, whether it be reading an email or in watching a little micro um, post or movie or video, You've got an elevator pitch length of time to get your story across, your ass. Not your story story, not how long the film is or what it's about. It's your pitch about that. It's your story of the story. It's your micro pitch, your elevator pitch. Grab attention. You've got a minute and a half or you've got nine floors of something or three minutes. You probably have this two to three minute and even in 90 seconds, it's, if you haven't grabbed their attention at the beginning, you, you're not even going to get the next 10 seconds because this is someone's lifetime and they value it. And it, it, even if they value in the sense of, I want an empty head, I don't want to be listening to blurb or, or just ads or adverts or constant uh, cold calls, they value their time because they already have their own workload. They're not asking for this unwarranted uh, attack of, 
I've got something for you, please consider me as well, and I'm going to sneak in from a different angle and try and get your attention while you're walking to the water cooler or getting the lift to go to the car or, or you're looking at your phone on the bus or the train, and then you try and do, a, do an elevator pitch while they're on the, on the, on the train. It's, you've got to get in front of them, but earn that respect. And in how you get in front of them, you have to sneak in when they're not looking. You have to do a little dance and dress up. You have to you know, be a little bit in disguise of not being a cold call. You're a cold call dressed up in, 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 in their go-dancing suit. You're going to go and do a little bit of dancing, a gr- little bit of flair. You're going to grab their attention, and before they know it, they're being pitched to. But they'll be bought in in a little bit of a relationship, which is what we talked before. It's grab her attention, you know, entertain me a little bit. You can let me know who you are a little bit after that because now it's about you and not about, it's about, it's all about me till it's about you. So don't think it's about you from the off. It's about me, my life, my time, what I'm about. If you want my time, it's about me. Now entertain me, inform me, educate me, do a little dance, do a little jig. And, and now I'll go, who are you? What are, you, what are you at there? I wouldn't mind another little dance. And, and was well, that a good dance? If it was a crap dance, you're already gone. So make sure you practice your dance in front of the mirror. Get your elevator pitch together. You've got 30 seconds to entertain, inform, educate, and possibly warm up a cold call. And you will then have the opportunity to do something about your story. One of the things that's very interesting about what... battery on this is about to die. Oh, it's about to die, is it? Okay, well, we'll try and keep on going a little bit. One of the things that's quite interesting is that Garvin was talking about actually getting to know the person you're trying to pitch to, and that's one of the things that's quite important. Understand the person before you go to see them. Then if you know what they want, you'll probably get more uh, out of them than you would do if you just go in very, very coldly. Is it still there with you, Garvin? I've no plug. I've no plug to plug it in. Well, I'll tell you what. If the camera's still going, know. is the camera still going? Yeah. Well, it's still going till it's we're, red. We're it's actually probably has a little bit of a, a little bit of something. We're actually at the I'm end. I'm going. You've you've we're, once in a lifetime. You've <laughs> once in a lifetime. This thing says your time is running out. It'll die when it feels like it. It's gone red. It's flashing, but it's still on. There's someone home. And that's the thing. I'm running around here trying to go. Where's their plug? I prepared for this. Yep. And my attention is now distracted. So it, if that was your once in a lifetime opportunity to grab my attention, I'm going, where's a plug? And, and, and like, I missed a dance. Then, then this is the thing. Make sure your timing is right. Make sure your audience is not distracted somewhere else. Align that attention span with your little presentation of j- dance and jig. And then get them to dance along. That's the whole point. Have, and a, have a little call to action. When the time's right, as the call of action I'm now doing is, it's time to say goodbye. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And thanks for joining us on this one. It's not once in a lifetime. We'll come back again next time. Bye for now. And I look forward, and George looks forward to your little dance. We can't wait to see it. And if you get us dancing along, we're in this world. Our stories are aligned. And you never know, we might be making your movie. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Do what it says on the tin. Follow and share.